Well, our text for today is uh, in Psalms, Psalms uh, 37, verses uh, 1 through 11, and verses uh, 39 and 40. Quite an interesting uh, sermon mat uh, 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 matter, <coughs> sermon matter today. One that I think you guys have heard many times before. We want to take just a little closer look at this particular subject matter. Um, Psalms 31, verses 1 through 11, and then verses 39 and 40. It says, starts out, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make you, your righteous rewards shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, uh, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Verse 9. For those who are evil will, will be destroyed, and those who hope in the Lord will inherit <coughs> the land. A little while, and the wicked will uh, be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. And verse 11, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. Now jumping to verses 39 and 40. The salvation of the righteous come from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Fathers, we uh, look at your word today. We just ask that you would give us what you want us to have from this. We know that you feed us continually as your people. And it's very important that we listen, that we learn, and that we go out and do those things that you, you have for us. Amen. We come before you now. We ask your inspiration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Where's that coming from? Praise the Lord, I guess we got some, somebody saying, hey, we want to be here with you. <laughs> okay, the title of the sermon today is Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. As um, David writes this psalm, he was seemingly struggling with the enigma of the prosperity of the wicked and the affliction of the righteous. Now, uh, David, when he wrote this, is older in life, when he writes this song, and he reflects upon the many years of his experience. Yet, the same old question continues to surface. Why do the wicked prosper when the righteous seem to be afflicted? Amen. Let's, let's read verse 1. He says here, he says, do not fret because of those who are evil or en be envious of those who do wrong. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 tells us to fret not. Don't be angry yes. or don't worry mm -hmm. because of those who are evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or don't be envious of those who do wrong. Now let's stop right here for a minute. Uh, let me ask you the question, what, why is that the case? Why is it that uh, we become kind of jealous or envious when we see the wicked <laughs> prosper? Why, why is that? Help me out here. Well, it's good for politics. <laughs> okay, good for politics. It's not fair. Because we want what they have. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's not fair. Um, we want what they have. Mm -hmm. No? I would think it's because we see evil people do evil things and 
preposterous. And yeah. You know, something ain't quite right with that. Something ain't quite right with that. Well, that's what she said. It's not fair. <laughs> it ain't quite right. It just ain't quite right. It ain't right. <laughs> it just ain't right. <laughs> not quite right. It ain't right. <laughs> you know, these people do everything. Oh, they just seem, seem, to, seem to flourish. We want to be blessed too. Uh, because what they do seems to be pleasurable. Because what they do is self-satisfying and pleasing. You know, they do these things and then they get that stuff which is, really seems to be okay. Self-gratifying. And it's, it's fun. You know, when they do stuff, for them, it's fun to live, and we look at that. Verse 2, for like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. But, you know, it says here that their actions, their deeds, their rewards are short-lived. Short-lived. Receiving mm -hmm. Preach. <laughs> they're doing, they're getting more and more, and they're not getting punished. They just seem to be, be flourishing. <clears throat> but on the other hand, David now is trying to tell us that there is a contrast here. There is a great divide. As I mentioned, David earlier, uh, as I mentioned earlier, David. <coughs> Is older, he's an older man now, speaking from many years of experience. He's got a handle now on this struggle, this enigma about the prosperity of the, of the, the wicked. And David gives us four things that we as Christians should do. And he gives us a couple of promises. These things explain why it's better to be a Christian and experience what, experience what God has to offer rather than the short-lived prosperity <laughs> that the wicked experience. Now, what are the four three things? He gives us four th things between verses 3 and 7. He says, number one, trust in the Lord. Number two, delight yourself in the Lord. Number three, commit thyself unto the Lord. And number four, he says, to rest in the Lord. Uh, these are the answers to our jealousy of when we see the wicked prosper, when they do things that are wrong. Trust in the Lord, delight thyself in the Lord, commit thyself to the Lord, and rest in the Lord. And then... In verse 6, he gives us one of the promises. He said he gives us two promises. Number 6 says, He will make a make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Let's, let's jump to that first promise. I like the way Living Bible uh, interprets that. Living Bible says, He will vindicate you with the blazing light of justice shining down as from the noonday sun. In other words, he will vindicate you or he will show that you are right. He will back you up with the blazing light of justice. Eventually, people will see that you are right, shining down as from the noonday sun. In other words, everybody will see it and everybody knows that you're, you will, you're right. It's coming. You might not see it right then, but he's going to vindicate you. So, let's take a look now at these four things that David talks about. Trust in the Lord, number one. Now again, I'm going to ask you a question. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? Help me out here. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? 
Know that he is in charge. Yeah. I like that. Know that he's in charge. Yeah. Even when things are going bad, we know that he has promised mm -hmm. that he's going to take care of us. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Have faith. Have faith. Yeah. Have faith. Trust in the Lord. Have faith. Miss mm -hmm. Washington? Believe him. Believe him. Okay. Those are some good answers. All those are good answers. Our willingness to do whatever God says uh, we should do in his word or through his Holy Spirit speaking in our lives. We don't see everything in the word as on a daily basis all the time, but his spirit is always there working with us. So we see it in his word or whether his Holy Spirit is speaking to us in our lives, we need to obey those things. That's trusting what, he's, what he says. Even though we might not want to do it or understand all of the ramifications of it, we do it because of the fact that Jesus is Lord of our lives. He's Lord. He's Master of our lives. So the attitude has got to be, therefore, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I will do it to the best of my ability. Amen. Classic example is when God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. Now, had you ever heard that before? Go take your son and sacrifice this one son that you waited so long for. You sacrifice him. Abraham, without question, did that. He handed out. I don't even know if he knew where he was going, but I just got to start walking. And then Isaac said, well, where is the lamb that we're going to sacrifice? God will provide. I hesitate to use this example, but I guess I will. Marilyn and I and our family here in Indianapolis, because it was suggested by our pastor way back in those long days ago in Chicago. He didn't say we should come to Indianapolis. He said we should need to get out of Chicago. <laughs> he said, you know, how was I then? I don't know. I was quite young then. We had games there in Chicago, and Chris was uh, just eight. A, was eight. Michelle was twelve. Michelle was twelve, and uh, he's, you know, hey, this is just not a good environment where you guys are staying. Mm -hmm. Now we don't we don't do that so much now. Pastors don't you know, tell you what, what to do, but back then, man, that's my my ears heard that. And I talked to him about it, and he says, hey, you need to move. Mm -hmm. So. I started checking things out. We moved to Indianapolis because Marilyn's dad, Marilyn's family was here. Her dad had cancer. My dad was having heart conditions in Cincinnati. So we moved here, we'd be close to both of them. And we lost them in six weeks, six weeks apart. Six weeks apart, we lost them. But sometimes you don't know what you need to do, but you need, you need to follow what you understand. Now again, I say the pastors nowadays, they don't tell you what to do. You, know, you need to you know, be wise and seek counsel. But that's all I knew. <laughs> so I've been in Chicago for 16 years. Now all of a sudden, you mean I got, I got to go? Well, you know, I can see the wisdom in what he was saying. Number two, delight yourself in the Lord. Well, what does that mean? Delighting yourself in God's word, what he says, what he reveals to you. That's delighting yourself in the Lord. Being in the presence of God and his people, mm -hmm. like this setting. Mm -hmm. That's being happy and delighting yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be at church and to be worshiping Jesus, my Savior. That's so many times, that's why so many times I got up here and I thank the praise team because, uh, wow, you know, I'm kind of transformed as I sit there in my seat and listen to what they, the words that they're singing. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I'm happy to be with believers and in that lifestyle, that's delighting yourself in the Lord, what they, how they live. You don't get that any place else. Well, you, you can. I guess there could be clubs and there could be family reunions. But you get that on a continual basis, a continual diet being in God's church. I'm, um, I fit in. Do you fit in around God's people? Amen. That's delighting yourself in the Lord. There are some people that will come to church and they will sit in a corner the whole service. They will sit in the corner. And it's like I'm at church, but it's, uh, it's you and me, God. It's you and me, God. I don't quite, you know, I don't quite get along with those people over there. But it's you and me. I'm at church. You say I'm at church. No. You fit in. Amen. That's delighting yourself with being with God's people. And he understands that and he likes that. Amen. I'm going to share. I'm going to give, share, and receive. Because these people reflect Jesus, his principles in life, and what he stands for. You know many people in our congregation who uh, don't stand for what Jesus stands for? Galatians 6.10, I'm not going to turn it, it says that we should prefer one another. That we should prefer those of the household of faith. Brother, there is no other relationships on earth that lead to salvation. Mm -hmm. So, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. The third principle that he brings out is commit thyself to the Lord. Well, uh, I'm going to commit myself to the Lord come hell or high waters. Or, have you heard this being said, uh, I'll be there tomorrow if it's God's will and the creek don't rise. <laughs> right now? Why is it that so many analogies refer to water like that? Uh, maybe it's the struggles that you go through in dealing with water. Flooding, torrential rains, determination to deceive what's once the water hits and there's devastation. But you know, many times it's not the big questions that get in the way of us following Jesus. It's the little decisions or struggles that we have to make. We're talking about committing ourselves to the Lord. Like, am I going to lie here? Or am I going to lie in this situation? Am I going to take advantage of the situation and cheat here? Taxes. Mm -hmm. you know, cheat a little bit. Hey, you know, check because the return is going to be big. Am I going to take something? The boss won't see me, so I'll just kind of slack off. Commit thyself to the Lord, not your boss. Am I going to blow a gasket in traffic when someone pulls out in front of me? 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, In all that you do, do it to the glory of God. Amen. That's so interesting. <laughs> No, nobody has to be around. Christians don't have to be around. Mm -hmm. You know, your family doesn't have to be around to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, mm -hmm. do it to God's glory. Amen. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, mm -hmm. and he will direct your paths. Yes. So, commit yourself mm -hmm. to the Lord. 
Number four is rest in the Lord. In other words, don't be impatient in waiting to see revenge on the wicked. Oh, man, don't you want to see revenge on them? Why are they getting ahead? God is going to deal with them, and I hope soon. When they are positively rewarded for their evil. I, I, I transcribe my notes from time to time. But somebody said something earlier that made me remember my old notes that I didn't transfer here. That many times, the wicked are positively rewarded. I mean... They are blessed. Mm -hmm. They drive nice cars. They have big homes. Mm -hmm. They have all the food that they need. They never know need. Mm -hmm. They never know need. And not only them, it goes on to their children. Mm -hmm. Their children have the silver spoon in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You say, well, well, I've never had that opportunity. I, that's never happened, happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, don't revenge. Don't be revengeful when the wicked are positively rewarded. In the long run, it's short-lived. It's short-lived. There are cases when it's been handed down and then that child accepts God and God will continue to bless them. God causes his reign to shine on the just and the unjust. Amen. Rest in the Lord. Settle down and wait on him. Mm -hmm. Snuggle in him. Mm -hmm. Confide in him. Yeah. Be comforted in him. Relax and let him handle it. That is the cutest little picture on the front of the bulletin. You don't know where my wife found that. Look at that picture on the front of the bulletin. Isn't that snuggling in the Lord? I mean, doesn't that picture? Oh, just so cool. Relax and let him handle it. There's a pastor that said, I heard this years ago. Okay, so you got a problem. You got a financial problem. And the mortgage is due. Or the rent is due. And it's due Friday. And this is Monday. And you don't see where the money is coming in. So Tuesday night and Wednesday night, you're up all night pacing the floor, trying to find out how you're going to get the money. You're pacing the floor. He said, give it to God. He's going to be up anyway. Amen. Why don't you just go to sleep? He's going to be up. Give it to him. He doesn't sleep. You go to sleep. Okay, so these are the steps that we have to take. Then you won't be overly concerned when the wicked people prosper. Your day is coming. Their evil deeds are short-lived. Let's uh, jump to, I don't know if I finished that, but let's just jump to verses 39 and 40. 39 and 40 says, the salvation of the right, righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. One comment from a commentary says, this literally means to be silent, not to murmur. That is, do not make any complaints when the wicked prosper around us. 
We must realize that God is fully, like she said, God is fully in charge of the situation and simply wait for him to work it out for our good and for his glory. We say amen to that. Amen. Brethren, God is, is a rewarder of those who de uh, diligently seek him. And he, this is promise number two, and he gives you the desires of your heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's just a ma matter of waiting and mm -hmm. being patient. Yes. Mm -hmm. Testimony. Mm -hmm. Kind of threw that in as a aside. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a, a trying few weeks for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much time I put into that party. <laughs> I'm coordinating it. It just takes extra work to you trying to keep it from somebody. You have to watch all of your notes and make sure you don't, because she don't miss nothing. <laughs> why, 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 what does that mean? Why that? You know, trying to find this place for us. But you know, I, I, I'm learning that I have to rest in the Lord. Amen. Rest in Him. Turn it over to him. He's going to be up. I don't need to be up. Let him handle it. Father, thank you so very much for your word to all of us as your people. Father, wherever we are, whatever station in life, we find that we ask ourselves that question. I mean, we're doing your, your work and your will. We're trying to be obedient. Why? Why are we not being blessed? Why are we not getting some of the things that we want? Mm -hmm. But Father, you have a word for us. We need to yeah. wait patiently for you. Amen. And yeah. you will come through. Amen. Thank we thank you. We pray that we can take this word with us. Mm -hmm. Constantly think about it. Mm -hmm. And it is something to be encouraged about. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.